back and going into game two of PUBG Europe contenders and I hope you guys are ready for another explosive round of a wrangle. It's time to watch and see if PG18 can continue this on because a win yesterday, a win today Cormac, we said about them needing to turn things yep. around, we said about them trying to get into those top standings and soon we'll be seeing those standings, boom boom bang, thank you very much yeah, Mr. Okay, Producer, that. PG18 crept their way in straight away <laughs> and that's what we were talking about at the beginning of today, how quickly all of this can change. Oh my god. Brute Force, better look next time. Where are you showing up, guys? You've dropped down to 10th and 11th place, respectively. But you know what? It's far from over because, like, better look next time. They're only five points away from PG18. The good thing for Tempest and Team Moops is that it's not much, but they actually created just a little bit of a points gap between them and PG18 and mm. downwards. And, and, and interestingly enough, Jokers, Red Foxes, Team Moops, Tempest. Yep. As long as those guys are still fighting up and, and staying around getting a few kills and stuff, there's going to be so much of this swapping positions. Yep. But the main thing they all need to work on is, let's just stay in the top eight, right? It's, it's not allowing it to slip too far away. Because in the end of the day, I don't think they give a damn on what no. actual number position they finish on. Well, when you look at like Jokers and Red Foxes, coming in today's <sighs> games, they were hitting an average around 6, 6.2 points per game. That's all they need to do, like you saw Red Fox is getting seven points. Might have been from kills alone. It doesn't matter how it comes, you know, where it comes from, but hitting that average points per game, it's guaranteeing that top eight. Even like you look at Air Station Mike, we talked about it. Eight points in the first game, they're hitting an average of eight points per game. I'll take that. I think we actually worked this out last season. And Toby, I know you watch a lot of this talk in the chat or just DM me or just do something. Was it eight points or like nine points you said was the average you need per game to enable yourself to be always guaranteed into like the top spot? Yeah. He was doing some sort of crazy yeah. maths on how it would work out. But Air Station Mike might be proving that theory correct. Now, huge potential, unique, going to go Nova and military base respectively. Joker's up in Savernia as always. El Giganta now because the plane is a lot fairer for these teams. Remember, it's down from the north of Savernia all the yep. way down to military base. Means El Gig will take all of Georgia Pole for themselves, which is really interesting because so many teams used to love, I'm going to take north and one will take south. And they often even wouldn't even fight each other, right? Yeah. They just leave each other alone because yeah. there is so much space within that city. But this time around, oh, it might no. not be happening, but instantly we're seeing kills come up. <laughs> Manny's been knocked down. He got run over. Spyro. He's taken out one of the MG Esports players, and he did that at some long range as well. Junu, though, where do you go from here? Because if you try to crawl away, you're definitely going to die from far. But also, oh, Grishka. Oh, 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 oh. Nailup's ducking and diving. He's like, I haven't got a weapon. Why? Why me? I need a pan, something, anything. Oh, oh, headshot. Dead. Nailup. I know, I know it's a terrible gun, and nobody ever holds on to it, but you know what? Whatever gets the job done, right? Oh, yeah. Hey, hey. at this point, you got a weapon. Yep. You're not in nail up shoes where you're going, great, I'm ducking and diving in and out of trees for no reason. Now for Junu, there's a risk for both sides here. Northern Lights, if they go forward, maybe one of the MG Esports yep. comes and wrecks them. So maybe you use two. But if you use two players to do that, you waste time looting. Now for Junu, if you try and crawl away, you're definitely going to get shot and dead. So you just got to sit there and hide. But at any time, another team from anywhere else could exactly. take you down. So he is just sat there thinking, ah, why me? Why now? Well, to be honest, though... It Okay, we saw in the previous game, it was actually the opposite, where one member of MJ took down Perfectix. They should realize that when the plane trajectory is in a similar path, both these teams are going to land in the same area. Why did they land so close and so together from the rest? Like, why did MJ land so far away from the rest of his team that he w <coughs> exposed himself like that? So you got to say that, yeah, okay, you, you know, a little bit unfortunate, but it could say that it wasn't as intelligent as it could have been. Yeah, and, and, and sometimes, right, you, you misjudge things, you don't exactly get the, the path you wanted, you jump too yeah. early. And, and this is where I think just pas passion, little passion, no, painful mistakes get made. If it was a passionate mistake, well then it's all well and good going in with passion, but you still made a mistake. Painful mistakes get made when you are getting the pressure, you're feeling it like these are the last few games, we have not got long left, we need to get these additional points, and small mistakes like this can again be the difference maker between whether you're going to qualify or whether you're going to have a rough time and have to re-go through contenders once again. You are dead right indeed, but now O'Connell from No Tag Team on his own in that compound. You do have Grishka Power from Four Kings a little bit further away, took a bit of damage, but was not knocked down. 
Both teams are kind of along with better luck next time, went on to the coastline. They look to kind of survive in this phase. Circle went to the east. Lipovka is unoccupied. You have milked the power plant unoccupied, but of course, the likes of Brute Force hold on to Yasnai, which is a really good spot, especially because there's plenty of looting, plenty of buildings that you can get what you need to, and you also have nice entry into the circles on the next couple of phases if it does shift far down south. Well, Tempers will be looking to turn things around from that previous game for sure. Moots. Porky saved the day from as a solo player last time. Oh no, Jazza, what are you doing? This is not what you want at all. Both of them stopping. Ghidorah, he ends up getting ripped apart as well. Air Station Mike, they are under pressure. Hugs has been knocked. Jazz has been eliminated. This is a fight that's not going to benefit either of them, but it's going to be a fight that they can't run away from. The nade's coming out. Double had one of his own, but that's not going to work out, and his nade should kill him. Did like, he have a well, pin? Yeah. My grenade went first. Oh, no. Now, he yeah, went off. He went to fate. Oh, wow. He actually managed to throw it off. I didn't see him throw the nade in no. time. And now Moops are going to come in and flush out the rest of them. Air Station Mike, they could be losing the consistency we spoke about. Oh, wow. I didn't think that grenade actually, you know, left his hand, no. so to speak. I think from the angle we were looking at, we just didn't quite catch it because we saw the other one. Nope. So this is huge. Moops, you lost one player and you're still going to be able to rip apart most of Air Station Mike. Yep. And we're, so Tozera is the only one that's still alive and he's down from the south of that building. So yeah, this is it. This is Air Station Mike Tozera. He's going to have to solo snake his way through the rest of the game. And I don't think we've seen Air Station Mike. I'm trying to think back if they've been in... I know they've been in a situation where they've been maybe a two-man team <laughs> from... 10, 12 minute mark, but I don't think they've been in a situation where they've been a one man team from five minutes onwards. The good thing for them is he's still inside circle and quite nice inside circle, so he should be okay. But I want to see how Tazera plays it. He's very experienced, very competent. And let's see if he can pull off a team moops. A team moops. <laughs> Can they do it? That's the question. Can he maybe just grab them some sort of points from here on out? Only time will tell. But what's happening this time around is Unique have left military base, but they're leaving around the similar time as huge potential you just saw there. And Zoltus is going to try and get the spray down, but he's not holding the best angle for this. I'm, I'm, I'm a bit confused by that, because he knew he'd already seen one team go across yeah. it, and he still held where he put his car. So that didn't actually give him an advantageous nope. position. It was easy for Dez out to run away, and he'll just continue to put for himself further forward. Yes, his car's smoking out a bit here, but look at PVVM. Good teamwork. He's ready to provide the backup if needed, if anyone else is chasing him down and standing doing exactly the same. So Unique playing this smart, and now if they really want, they'll bridge camp and wait for the rest of Huge Potential. The only thing I'm scared of is Greg's the only one who's not made it across. So if I'm Greg now, I ain't making any noise. I'm, I'm allowing Huge Potential to do what they want from here, and I'm just going to keep it chill. And I think Huge Potential are going to make the clever choice, which they should have <laughs> done in the previous game, and move towards a western bridge. It would make sense. There's still plenty of space to get into a circle from that west side. The only potential they're going to go up against is maybe no tag team, but that's highly unlikely. And it just, considering their overall position and that they need as many points as they, as they can and unique, they look strong at the best of times. It's not worth it. Now, this map stream is showing us everything right now. Huge potential realized. All right, they're probably going to bridge camp us. Yep. So let's go over towards the Western Bridge. This is what they didn't do last time they paid the price for it. Now they're learning from their mistakes. Unique, though, they're going to just chill around here. They're only going a bit further up north. But will they be aware that four kings snuck around on a boat, of all things, to get back onto the <laughs> circle? Oh, no, Tozera. He's taking shots and he's taking damage. His solo life may be being ripped from him by the better luck next time teams. And, well, it will be better luck next time for ASM if he does go down because he is the only member left. I know, I know it's strange, but even if Tazira goes out, it's funny because their station Mike will still score points. I know that's not much, but it's kind of like, you know, they'll still score points. It's it's still, yeah, it's still better it's still than nothing. Something. Exactly, exactly. And, and I like the fact that Tazira is still looking to find those shots off. It shows that he has the drive, the passion, and, and just the just a kind of, you know, the zero Fs to give just to kind of pop off whenever he gets a chance. Um, but I like the fact that then he made the intelligent play to rotate to a different compound, so he, there's a higher chance he's not going to get spotted out. Now, El Gigante, one of our teams who were just outside that top eight, looking to find their way back in. They've had some games where we say, yes, okay, this is better, but the 
it's not even the consistency that isn't there because they've been consistently fighting, they've been consistently getting involved. They've just not been able to have some of those big games. And I mean, like a top four placement with multiple yep. kills alongside it. That's what's going to solidify them a chance of sitting within this top eight. As the new circle pops, we've got a pretty good circle here, actually. So most people are still included in it. Huge potential, no tag team. The only ones on Elgig need to make their way in, but everyone else is going to have no problems at all, at least for the meantime. You could see Brute Force and Tempest. As far as I know, I've seen Tempest hold on to the south side of, um, of prison before. But now we see Seth potentially going to get called out down to 71 health. All four members of Belgian Gatham. They find him, they take him out. And this is a good start here, but a problem for the Jokers players. Jokers, again, they had a good chance right in the previous game, but they yep. went out in seventh with four kills. They were fighting very actively from the beginning, but losing the player early on is not what they wanted to see again. It's the same way it went down last time, just in a different position. Marcelic looking to take some shots against the brute force boys. He's got some cover from the vehicles there, but he took a few shots and then decided against it. I do want to hope the vehicles are going to stay safe because Morpheus and Norcus still need to get the hell out of there as well. Uh, Jokers have had the habit of kind of separating, um, and yeah, losing a member early on has compromised the result in the past. It will in this game as well. <coughs> As uh, we saw Blast on trying to take a couple of shots off towards no tag team, but didn't connect. And he's had to be very aware because he took also some damage himself. And he'll back away. You can see no tag team jumping out, having a little scout around before they decide on exactly yeah. what they want to do here. Had they spotted out Tozero, I wonder. He continues to try and move himself around. And you look at how he's playing. He's not trying to get deeper to that center. He's just trying to hang around the same area. Remember, he was at shelter. Now the moops are there. He's moved further down stealth. He's just trying to avoid the action, and rightly yep. so. Being that solo player, we talk about their consistency, and they've always been able to do pretty damn good throughout these games. He wants to continue this on once again. And, and he's also in circle enough that when phase three shows up, there's a huge chance he's still going to yeah. be inside there, which makes it's it a safer. deep nade. Wow. Oh, Norcus even Ooh. takes damage from that nade. I want to throw an arm like that. Makan, he's going to be looking further forward here. Helga got to be very careful. They're just out in the open running. They're throwing names back forward to the BF boys themselves. Hawk's got to be careful. And that's very close to him. He takes some further damage. They're not going to fully connect with him just yet. He's trying to use the rock for cover. He's got to take some additional shots. Marcelic taking plenty of damage, but that nade just on the money. Hawk Boy, goes yeah. down and he'll be completely down and out. Ghost Star finishes him off. Elgig doing it once again. But still, the rest of Brute Force, they're not backing away just yet. Amorous working his way around the side. Hello, Senpai. He's up in the house and he is joined by Macken in the back. And I love Elgig Ganden's position. Two and two split. You have Ghost Star and Marcel flanking from the south. And then you have, of course, Norcus and Morpheus are just outside the building looking to flank from the left to catch out and pinch the side of brute force. Listen to this, you hear Senpai, he was just listening. He was hearing those footsteps. He wants to know how close yeah. Elgig are getting towards him. You said it perfectly. This 2-2 split is a great like SWAT-style swarm yeah. onto the building. Amaris might try and get on the flank, though, to Elgig's. You just caught on the right-hand side. Nade's gone in and doesn't do any damage, but it was a perfectly well-placed nade. Ghost not going to work his way in, but he can't get it. The drop is not going to work out. Senpai instantly in for the flush. And the problem here was Ghost Star went in solo. Yeah. He should have gone in with a 2v2. We were just praising that decision-making, and then he errored it. Marcelic should have been told to come with him. Where was the communication? That was a team nade onto Marcelic as well. This is not going well. Elgig, slow things down, calm it down, work out what's going out, and also keep an eye on where Amorous is going. He's on the flank to you boys. Tunnel vision. No, oh, he did more so damage, Marcellic. Wow. <coughs> oh, boys, what is going on? Communicate. Say where you are. Look, Elgig are now going to swarm. Macken has to do huge damage here. He tries to spray him down, but it's far too much. Morpheus is able to get some kills in. He's going to go in for the flushes as well. But Norcus is the only one that remains. Has he got time to get the revive in? All the while, we have Team Oops and MJ Esports popping off. Team Oops get eliminated just like that as MJ will survive with Ojala being barely put down. Stratus will most likely lose his life at the hands of Tempest. In the background, will Tempest also drive forward to try and get that squad right for themselves under MJ? But that's good stuff coming out from 
MJ Sports in this game two of the day as a one man army, what can Ojala do? Now just to go back quickly, yeah. anything you just saw from Elgig and BF, the Elgig way of 2-2 splitting onto that building was perfect. They then fluffed things up yeah. with bad communication and then Brute Force, who did have an advantage in that fight, naded yep. themselves. And that caused the push for Elgig to say, ah, this is our time to strike. And that was a good reaction from Elgig. They knew that was the time they had exactly. to go. Now Tozera, he's hiding between the rocks. <laughs> Al Rain's gonna run in front of him. Ah! One dead. Then goes in for the flush. Oh, no, finish him off, careful. There's another player on no, the no, side. No, no, no. He's running around, he's looking, he knows they're going to be close and he can't get it done. Air Station Mike out in 15th from probably their worst position of this week for sure, maybe of all time. <laughs> but they still got points, so you know what, I'm going to go. <laughs> Here we hey, go. Look, nobody's perfect. Air Station Mike have had a fantastic <laughs> run of games up until this point. Hell, if, you're, if that's your worst performance in 32 games, you know what, like, that's nothing to be sniffed at, but Meta Bay... And the rest of Red Fox is from this prison, north side area. Looking for the tab. Grenade gets popped out. Will it connect? It doesn't quite. But you see Freenop is just kind of going a little bit more forward to the right of him. But you can't deny where Jokers are placed. They've got to be so careful. Plenty of shots coming their way. Can someone also tell these teams to chill a bit? Because my throat can't take this much longer. <laughs> This is only game two, and I'm literally dying. I'm, like, I'm hitting the mute button real fast. Can uh, we press F and chat for change of throw, please? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was so scared for Tozera. We had the craziness of Elgig going up against BF. Oh, man. Kofes will go down, though. Unique's able to get the kill, so Red Fox is still under pressure yep. here. Now, they were dealing with Jokers on the north, and Unique now from the south. Prison is literally a prison for Red Foxes if they cannot get out of there. It is indeed. Um, it was part of the reason was because Red Foxes were in a, in a bit of a 2-2 two two split. And uh, they just got pushed too hard by Unique at the end of the day. And they lose one of their members. It's okay, James. We'll get through it together. The pain you feel is the pain I feel, you know? Um, <laughs> has huge potential. They're outside circle. You have PG-18 are down south outside circle. Four Kings are also there. So when you look at this phase not a lot of teams are inside it just tempest red foxes jokers and unique and this is where it gets a lot harder for these teams it starts to shrink we've still got 14 teams alive but only 43 players up in it zoltas he can hear what's going on he's trying to find out oh nemrith Goes down an easy nice. one frag for zoltas nicely done as well he wasn't frantic with it he waited it out and now pg18 Going to be looking to see if they can take down any of the huge potential players. But Recrent, he decides to back away. He's not willing to take this fight just yet. He wants to group up with the Wanderer and at least fight this as a team. That's the best decision right now as Northern Lights are going to find these Elgin players. North is being sprayed down. Oh, he gets knocked off the bike, but he's still up and running. Now lots of damage coming his way. Brute Force get eliminated. Amorous has finally found it. Tempest picking up the kill. And Nork is just trying to hide behind the tree and keep himself going. Now MJ Esports get eliminated. Laza found Ojala. That's going to be a good point going over free symbol Wildcats as they just go out in the open with those four <coughs> vehicles. Apocalypse was knocked down, but that revive will most likely successfully come through. All the while in your picture-in-picture, picture, Norcus, one of the two remaining, well now not taken out by Perfectix. Yeah, so you've still got two Elgig players yep. up in it, Morpheus and Marcellic up in the north. They'll now have an idea of where Northern Lights are, but Northern Lights are playing a 2-2 split. Two in the circle, two outside of it. O'Connell getting the damage done. Huge potential now, having no tag team fight against him. It's only Give It and O'Connell left up in this fight, though. They've got smokes in front of them. They're still going to use some more. They want to be able to have a good chance now to deal with the remaining huge potential players who are right on the edge of the blue zone. And at phase four, you can take it for a while, but when you're fighting, you definitely don't want to be involved in this. And Unique now taking shots at the no tag team oh, wow. players. No matter where you look, no matter where you turn, there's shots coming up towards you. You need to find some cover, or otherwise you're going to go down like the Wanderer just found. Uh, no, O'Connell was knocked down, but the Wanderer was taken out in return. So that's actually a knock for a kill. And it's going to be dead out from Team Unique, eliminating PGA. Team 35 players of the car blows up. Marcelic is on his own. Northern Lights are looking for him. And now Morphe oh, comes no. in. Actually, no, Morphe drives away and goes, sorry, buddy, not worth it, but loses life. 
This isn't the Matrix Morpheus. You cannot escape in your car like that. You're not dodging bullets for days because these guys will spray you down. Marcelic, he tries to provide some return fire, but he is heavily outnumbered. He's going onto the deep. He's trying to blow everything up around him, but he has no nades. And in the current nade meta, it is so vital. He spots Spyro's head. He's able to do some more damage. And I've got to give credit to Marcelic here. He's playing this beautifully. All things are against him. He's not taking much damage, and he's just trying to put as much hurt onto them as possible. And he picks he actually... up the kill onto Perfectix. He actually, he's getting the job done. He's actually pushed what? Northern Lights away. Is okay. Don't Bro give us the map screen. Down. Give us Marcelic. I want to see what's going on. How is this possible? Okay, Bro gets taken by the boom. Come on, make this picture bigger. I don't want to look at the small screen. Timmer, listen to me. I don't want Ready? the map. Get I want to know what Marcelic Move can do. It. He's up at three kills. There's only two players in front of him. Why are we still on the map screen? No one cares. Oh my God. I want to see from Marcelic's <laughs> Mate, he's, so, he's doing this so well. He's got a car and rocks to cover him. He had no utility other than smokes. He didn't have the nades, which would have been a huge for him there. And he's looking to do some more damage. He's onto Spyro. He takes some damage himself. He has to use bandages, though. I can't even see what first aid and stuff he has. I'm guessing not much because he's bandaging. Why are we not focusing on this? And he hasn't got a lot of I don't care about Give it just sat here prone on the floor. Because they're outside the blue zone. So it's not worth... <sighs> it's not worth... Um, you know, he's, uh, I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm as confused as you. Change it up, get that full screen onto Marcelo from El Gigante. He's looking to get the work done. The good, oh, he takes a couple of shots by peeking around to the right. He has to be very careful with his position. He's still, still got the rock, still got the car. He can't use that vehicle to get away. He's outside circle. Time is ticking before this blue zone closes in. He's got the smoke for some additional cover. Spyro spraying through it. Masalik does eventually go down, but what a courageous effort from that man. I'm really happy of how he tried to play yeah. that. Because he was fighting four players, gets two knocks in, one kill he picks yeah. up himself, one stolen away from him. But he's forced so much onto Northern Lights that's basically ruined their game. There was no way they should have been able to get away with that. Nope. Northern Lights should have easily picked him apart. Talk about being picked apart. Four kings possibly going to get blown out with a <coughs> grenade, as you did see in distance, as the boom from Jokers gets connected onto by Hort of Tempest as Hanny driving on through. That's, see, this is what happened with Northern Lights. They took too long taking out El Giganten. They're being pinched by both East Symbol Wildcats and Tempest in the north and the northwest side of this phase five circle as the blue zone is closing and we're we're gonna see phase six prison is still inside circle will it shift up north i reckon it will i don't think it's gonna go in towards prison but at least for now four kings and unique who are fighting down south on the edge of this prison using the hills using the dips pvvm found blast on unique taking shots from both sides here four kings two players knocked Standing, taking a bit of nade damage there, down less than half health now. A lot of smokes to cover them, but they're running side by side. Standing's right next to Higgy, but they just can't see each other. Now we hear the shots, maybe he'll try to react on that. But you're allowing him to get away with far too much here. First aid's going to come in, and Higgy somehow manages to escape from this. I don't know how he managed to survive that. Now he's going to be prone down the circle, phase six. They go up, four kings get eliminated in 10th, nine teams, 22 players. Unique managed to survive. Still as a three-man team, but as they move in to the circle, as they go out into the open, outside the prison, you have huge potential ahead of them. You have no tag team. And of course, Red Foxes, who occupy down three-man team inside the prison compounds, will also have to make their way through. Now, what's really interesting here is there is only one yep. team in Istanbul Wildcats and Moon in the current circle. Majority of the players and teams are coming from the south. Yep. This southern side is going to get crazy. And Moon, he's right on the edge to watch them all walk in. Ehot's taking multiple shots here up against the unique guys, but he's low on health. Has to be oh so careful. Oh, no. And so much utility is being used. We see Wookie Bookie actually get a knock on to Laza. That's a heavy player to take down early on here on the Istanbul Wildcats side. A standing, pushing forward. He sees what's going on. Comes in with a spray down. Easy to get the finish off but actually that nade oh, wow. it bounces back it rolls on top of standing and will knock him down what can pvvm do here him and dezo need to come up top trumps if they want to try and finish them off oh he spots the barrel of the gun dezo beautifully played huge potential out in eighth but that could be it for unique as well <laughs> and look at that o'connell and giver from no team the final two members turned around and said okay you fight each other, we'll pick up the pieces, we'll get the kill points, you guys get eliminated. Suddenly we're down to six teams, 16 players, and give Al Connell, they have to be very 
careful. They've done a lot of work in this game. Ooh, ooh, At ooh. last, it gets taken out. Apocalypse got knocked down. And Tempest are just flying on through. Hanny and Clib in the front line looking to get the final blow. Tempest were outside the circle on the western yep. side, running on the north. Find the Wildcats, start taking them down. Got three players up alive and only Genzo left yep. to five. Now, Tempest have control of over 30, well, over 40% of the entire circle compared to all the other teams who are down in the south. And, and you know how that happened? It was the first knockdown onto Laza that activated Tempest's push into the circle so they could overtake where Eastern Bull Wildcats had occupied as Red Fox is doing what they can to try to get out of prison. But better luck next time. Had a great day yesterday. Not a good first game today, but looking to make up for it. Yeah, they got four kills already. Kissick's been knocked. So whether he'll be able to be brought back up or not. More nades going out, but better luck next time. We'll just fall back. They don't need to overextend at this point. And they also need to keep their wits about them of yep. who else is going to be coming down. Because Genzo may be still alive for the Wildcats, but I'm not sure Tempus are fully aware of it. You can see now on the map as the circle centers up and Tempus oh, again crap. to take full control. And because they're just maneuvering themselves around at this point, right? There's no compounds to fight between, which is perfect, which means you have to rely yeah, on all exactly. that aim and the little bits about a little bit of cover that you would have. So any of these teams now trying to enter into the circle, they have to be oh so cautious. You need to scout effectively and keep your wits about you as Wookie Bookie, he lands a second headshot now. Getting the job done, faultlessly goes down, and there's some great distance on that shot. Just want to point out that earlier on, O'Connell did help Red Fox by getting a <coughs> knockdown onto one member of um, better look next time. Eastern Bull Wildcats do get eliminated in sixth place at the hands, finally, of Clip over on Tempest. As Tempest are a three man team, they hold on to the whole of north side, north side of the circle, just overlooking the rest of the teams. Nice. And they're getting it done. O'Connell taking out Hanny, just pulling it out. He's on a bunch of kills for himself right now. And as a team, they are nine, nearly double digits. Nine kills and a guaranteed fifth place. They've got yeah. most circle control here. Teams having to run in, but also they've got good utility still. Look at this. Bandages, first aid kit, smokes all up on there. This is really solid stuff coming out from the Tempest boys, making up for that game that we were kind of surprised of yeah. last time in game one here today. Tap, tap, tap. Artix is trying to stay alive. He tries to jump off, but that's going to be a bit of a problem. He does manage to stay alive. Wookie. Not able to hit those shots fully onto him. Fate's the one to get knocked next. But Artix, what can you do from here? You're not going to be able to save your teammate, that's for sure. No, and let's, let's not forget there's still that final member of Joker's Moon. He's had Circle for quite a while. It's just on the edge for now because it did shift up northward down outside, outside of prison. Could cause an upset onto Red. Nope, gets spotted out. Red Foxes pick up that kill. Meta Bay, they're on two right now. Tempest are on ten kills. Fate has been taken out, just leaving Artix the last man standing for better look next time, along with the final member of No Tag Team that is given. So it's 3v2v1v1. Bookie trying to land those shots. Needs to maybe yell out like a Wookie and give himself the extra roar, <laughs> the extra motivation to get the job done here. He's found three kills already. And what I love about this for Tempest is it's a nice split on the kills. They're all yeah. taking their turn. They're all doing the damage. There's no one man just standing out front for them. Now, Red Foxes, they're looking to deal with better luck next time before they engage with anyone else. Give it is just chilling. He's prone. He's on the edge of the road. And he's yep. hoping no one might expect him. And Clib hasn't spotted him out just yet. Just because of how the, the area is working, he can't fully see him. Yeah, he has that kind of tiny dip, both just on the edge of the road and on the edge of the hill that... Tempest hold on to. And what's really risky for Red Fox is the second they exit away from where they're holding on to, it's open season, open road. And I also want to point out Arctic, so better look next time. Got to give him a lot of credit for dodging all those shots that were being yeah. thrown in when he his jumped direction. Off, when he jumped off the yeah. vehicle, right? He should have He should have been dead he to right. And he was just like, nope, I'm dodging everything. He's playing, you know, like the mask with Jim Carrey when he oh, danced yeah. on them shots. And he's just like, ding, 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 smiling. That's what Artix was doing. <laughs> Now, this is a good overview of what we can see, right? Red Fox is so close to Arctic, but they've got no idea. Give it. He hasn't moved for nope. two circles now. He's just chilling, prone. Tempest, they've got full control of over 40% of the circle, all up in the northern area. They know they don't have to move. They know that teams are going to have to come to them. And when this next circle centers up, they're going to be the ones with full control. It's just playing the waiting game when you're Tempest. You don't want to be too aggressive because they're going to be aware that, yes, even though they have the man advantage, it still could go against them because those yeah. four remaining members can group together, catch them out, and Tempest can find themselves suddenly in a situation where they are 
against the grain. But what I do love is that Wookie Boogie got in that vehicle, even just for a split second, and pushed Ooh. it a little bit more into the circles. We not made our way through. Now they know. Yep. Now they know Arctic. So he must have spotted Freenop because obviously Freenop stood up. He's prone. Yeah. Tries to get the nade out and potentially get a knock in. And that could have been huge if he did get it. But now his position is known to a degree. They have an idea of where that came from. It's just reacting on it. The worst thing Arctic can do here is stand up. But he knows as soon as that circle starts moving, crawling is not going to deal with it. You there see? You know. Look. He'll watch it. And is he going to take any damage? Time to go. Nade's flying out. Arctic. Keep moving. Keep moving. There we go. you got no hope of just waiting. They're not going to make any mistakes. They outnumber you, buddy. Yeah, but then what Red Fox has to be careful of is that Tempest was there. Clip knocked down free enough. Arctic's there trying to pick it up, but no return fire. Meta Bay getting the job done, putting Bear Look next time out of it. Down to three teams, six players. Three against two, against one. But I don't think the Meta Bay's killing will himself. Yeah, Meta Bay's three killing knock. himself. Go, yeah. Don't give away any of the kills. You know how tight this game's going to be. Now it's all up to give it to fight off three members of Tempers, and they're going to go on the hunt. He might just allow himself to go down. He tries to spray it out. He looks to try and get a kill in. He's going to die out to the zone anyway. The first place of 11 kills, and Tempers once again take a win here. Just this week alone, they've had three wins. They've been impressive yeah. wins at that as well. And they're the first team to get four chicken dinners of Group B. Boom. What a push. And as you point out, three of those chicken dinners in week two, yeah, of course, you you always want to get a good start. Yeah. To finish on a high like they're doing right now Best and way. heading into, putting them into the top eight, mm -hmm. very good result for them. And remember, Tempest was fourth when we started today. Yeah. Went down to sixth because of how close everything is. Of course. And now, with this win... That's a 21-point game. That's going to help them solidify themselves back into yeah. third place. They're still trying to play catch-up to the likes of Northern Lights and Air Station Mike. But I think overall, this game today, to me, says that all these teams are giving it their all to another level now because this is beyond what we've seen for the rest of the week. I think they know it's getting closer, it's getting yep. scarier, and it's time for them to work every little advantage they can. And you've got to say, Wookie Bookie and Clib, those guys were hitting some huge shots for Tempest today. Indeed. Now, we did see the initial fantastic push from El Gigantin onto Brute Force. The grenades got the job done, but Ghost Star just got a little bit too aggressive, a little bit too tunnel vision. Yeah. Found himself getting called out. This but, was awkward as hell. Yeah, it was. It was. They made up for it, though, at the end by wiping out um, Brute Force. And this was MJ Esports taking down Team Moops. It was good to see MJ Esports being a little bit more aggressive. They had lost a member at the start of the game. But got their revenge. Tozera, we we thought he would try his best yeah. with it. It wasn't exactly an ideal situation for him. But overall, I think he'll be, okay, we didn't get completely annihilated. He still got the flush in there, got a couple of kills yep. regardless. Probably one of the worst games for Air Station Mike. And the worst games is when you're still getting two kills. I ain't complaining about that. That's not, not something to be shying away from anytime nope. soon. Nope. Like, I think their worst day in total points was something like 21 <coughs> points in four games. <coughs> you know, and that, that was their worst day. And their best days have been like 36 to 45 points per day. And they've hit so such a good average overall. But yeah, this is El Gigante. Marcelic, my God. Impressive. He, he was basically a four-man team. Look, now we get the, the full screen mode. That's what know, we asked right? for. There we go. On highlights, you give it to us. Thank you, guys. You know, not that I'm tilted that we missed all that. Because I wanted to see what, like, utility and stuff he had, right? He was in such a good spot. And I think that was the, the problem here for Marcelic is he'd done so much good work there that he had spent so much of that utility yeah. he had early on, which meant getting away was then near impossible and he ended up dying and paying the price. Now, this was brilliant as well, right? Because you watch this. No tag team. See all this go down. Yeah, you guys can fight. We'll just watch it happen. Yeah. HP and Unique going up against each other. And then they just come in at the end and go, cool, clean up duty and clip with these nades. End up with three kills from the nades. Yeah, it was just great because suddenly we saw like O'Connell and give it just like kill feed, kill feed, kill feed. Yep. Secure those points for a side. And it, Tempo, Wookie Bookie oh. was so accurate with so many of those bolt action shots. Along with the rest of Tempest, the only real kind of like mistake I saw was kind of allowing Artix to stay alive um, and letting him kind of stay protected until the final circle. Yeah, he got away with murder quite yep. literally. And <laughs> hence why he was even able to be in this position because they spotted him out from a long time ago. But yep. it, it wasn't going to be. He survived longer than what he should have potentially been able to. But either way, Tempest's win here was a big deal. Now, looking at these points, wow. Air Station Mike, two kills in the end. Still not too bad, all things considered, right? Yeah, of course. And PG-18, after a great game one, 
coming into game two with zero points, it kind of really, it, it really kind of down downplays how good of a job that they have been doing, but also shows their inconsistency because we've seen it before in games for them where they'll get a good result and then the next game they'll kind of go out in, in a low position. So that feels bad, man, for them. Four kings in brute force getting one point each. Team Moops getting five. And look at this, 11 kills, 10 placement points, 21 for Tempest. But only two teams in double digits. That was them and no tag team. Yeah, interesting stuff, actually, this time around. It was a little bit more scarce because yeah. Jokers ended up with fifth but only got one kill in it. Better luck next time, fourth place with four kills. Red Fox is third and three kills. Yeah. So a lot less on the kills in, in that sense. But then you have Unique who went out in seventh but still had seven kills. You know, like, it, it's quite a disparity in how this all works out. And damage across the board you just saw there. And the kills were very even. And Team Moops, Tempest alone. Look at this, Tempest. Three, three, three. Yep. Where's the other one? Two. <laughs> short, short is this, that's still not even bad. That's like ridiculous. Look at these guys. And and I think that shows and it backs up what you said that every single team is pushing as hard as they can to get as many points as they can. It's yeah. so close. So, so close indeed. But Tempest, no wow. tag team. Wow. Yep. A thousand more damage on Tempest for that win. And that was because no tag team had a solo player at the end there. But yep. they still, even with just getting the second place, they had five kills alongside it, which meant they actually did finish overall second. So you can't really discredit that. Nope. Not at all. Not at all. This, <laughs> this, can, this is just hey, mean. Can you really this is just mean. Come on. Like, you know. Like, that, that doesn't... That's yeah, not Yannick even wasn't even the final member. I know. It's just like, maybe they just saw Yannick's damage and went, we're just going to be mean. Yannick, we still love you. You you did something, mate. You were still on the board. This is just an unfair comparison. <laughs> and Clib's just getting all the credit in the world. Like, God, like <laughs> performance in comparison. Yeah, it, it makes Clib <laughs> look like a legend. <laughs> that's all right. We'll, we'll, we'll talk to him afterwards. We'll make... We'll go... Not on that silly camera when it's in crazy situations like that. Yep. And let's compare kindly. But what we're going to do next is go to a break as always. And when we come back, we're going to Miramar. No more Orangle for today. Only Miramar and Sanok remains. We will see you guys very shortly. <laughs> 